Good evening everyone. My name is Advais Sanjeev Rajpat and I am here today to give you a speech on Bill Gates. Bill Gates was born in Seattle in Washington on October 28, 1955. He is a son of William Henry Gates and Mary Maxwell Gates. His father was a prominent lawyer and his mother served on the boards of director for the first interstate bank system. Gates has one old sister, Christy, and young other sister, Libby. At his age of 13, he enrolled in Lakeside School, a private preparatory school. His parents wanted Gates to become a lawyer, but he took his interest in programming GE system in basic and he was accepted from math class to pursue his interest. Gates was, on, Gates was a National Merit Scholar when he graduated from Lakeside School in 1973. He scored 1590 out of 1600 in Scholastic Aptitude Test and enrolled at Harvard College in the autumn of in the year 1973. He chose pre-law major but took mathematics and graduated level computer science. In his second year, Gates devised on logarithm for pancake sorting as a solution of one of the series of unsolved problems presented in a combinatorics classes by Harry Lewis, one of his professors. Gates did not have a definite study plan while he was studying at Harvard and he spent a lot of time <coughs> in school computers. He remained with the contact of Paul Allen and he joined him at Honeywell during summer 1974. Gates and Allen saw the opportunity to start their own computer software company. Gates read the January 1975 <coughs> issue of Popular Electronics. Windows Microsoft launched its first retail version on November 20, 1985. He gained a reputation for being distant from others. Gates was an active software developer, particularly in companies programming language, but his main role was a manager. On June 15, 2006, he announced that over the next two years he would be transitioning out of his day to day role to dedicate more time to his philanthropy. He divided his responsibility between <coughs> people, Ray Ozzy and Craig Mundy. In 2008, Gates appeared in a series of ads to promote Microsoft. Today, he is one of the richest billionaires of the world. Some of his inspiration was were my success, part of it certainly is that I have focused on a few things. If GM kept up technology like the computer has, we would all be driving $25 cars that got 1000 mpg. I believe that if you show people the problems and you show them the solutions, they will be moved to it. It's fine to celebrate success, but it's more important to hit the lessons. Thank you. Do you feel he failed at any point of time? Yes, he had failed at a point during his college, but then uh, he recovered and he started taking interest in programming. Lawyer, he, the lawyer says he was not able to do, so he started doing programming. How did he become the owner of Microsoft? As I said, he participated with Paul Allen and uh, both of them worked on Microsoft and made their company. He is a manager actually. He is the owner of Microsoft but at starting he was the manager and after that he became the owner. Do you feel anyone opposed him? No, no one opposed him. In whatever he was doing? No, no one opposed him. What's his biggest weakness? What's his biggest weakness? Weakness. There is no weakness. 
do you feel he is your role model? I don't think that, but yes, dear, yes. Does he do any social work? He do uh, he donates. I think so. I don't know at exact amount, but he donates his money, and he has said that when he will die, he will donate half of the money to the charity. Is a role model what qualities you want to enable? For me? Yeah. First, uh, that is, uh, you can go from zero to hero without anyone's help. That's the first thing. Second thing, uh, to achieve success here means no one, <coughs> you are alone. Uh, uh, you yourself have the capability to do anything. Any learnings from his personal life? Um, let's see. Any learnings from his life? Or any? His life. Have you learned anything from his life that you like? Mm -hmm. Like he left college. Yes. Is that something you like about him or not? He left college. I didn't like that thing, but I like that he uh, he's the uh, <coughs> he made Microsoft by himself. Do you feel Bill Gates and Steve Jobs can be friends? Never. But they were friends. They were friends. But Steve Jobs is now Android. Like if they would have Apple. If problem comes on each other, means they might help each other. What do you feel is his greatest accomplishment? Uh, his greatest accomplishment is Microsoft becoming successful. What are the hurdles in his life? Uh, the hurdles in his life were First of all, um, the hurdles and the difficulties. I don't know about so. What was his family background like? His father was a lawyer. His mother thinks he was a like middle class family. Thank you. More well, yeah, so in the beginning he was studying in a uh, school at Jharkhand. So he used to he he was an excellent player in badminton and badminton and <coughs> football. So while he was keeping the cricket coach suddenly came, he liked the way he played like he, he thought he'll be a successful cricketer and so he chose him to cricket. So from that day uh, the coach uh, sent him to just practice cricket, so he excelled there. Question. So, what do you like about MS Dhoni that you want to inherit or you want to get? Any quality of his that is like he was very hard working. He was like he his family was very poor. So from there he's like coming on the national TV, so it's like very big achievement for him. Of course, that he, he, has very, he has worked very hard in life. What do you feel is his greatest accomplishment? Winning the World Cup. Like, he made 91 runs, he was not out. He got the man of the match too. Is he a role model? For me, or for the... Uh, is he your role model? Basically, I don't play much cricket, so I agree he's a great player, but not my own. Okay. Uh, according to me, his father was not agreeing first. Who, who were opposing him from becoming a cricketer? As a going to sports is a much hard thing, and a lot much of hard work is required. So.
who were opposing him from becoming a cricketer. His father basically cared about his life. His father was thinking that cricket won't give him enough money to be successful, but he proved him wrong. Yeah, so his father weren't opposing him. They were just they just cared about him. What do you feel was his turning point in his life? When he dropped the job of TC, he used to collect tick, like he used to catch people from railway station. So he left that and went for cricket. Why did not go to football at the Because his coach told him to practice cricket during school days. What do you feel would be his message for the youth of today, if he were to give? <coughs> that life is all about hurdles. You, you have to face it whenever it comes to you. Like it's never easy. You have to agree the fact that it's never easy. Was there any point when he, he had to face when he had a bad face? Yeah, when he was small. His not father. there when he was playing cricket for India. Yeah, earlier like he was not very known. Later he, he developed the fame, like many people didn't knew him. They didn't even knew that he used to play for India. So later he scored many runs, so he got famous. No. Did he lose some? Did he lose? Like, like, uh, like how they say that he is in a bad form. Do you feel, how has he come out of it? Yes. Yeah, it's like if you're a sports, sportsman, like, what were you trying to see like He was, he had a bad patch. You say a bad patch when you don't score runs. Yeah. Then they asked he should retire and all of that. Now also the to topic is that will he play, will he play the World Cup 2019? Do you think he can play? Yeah, he's fit enough to play. He plays very well like you have seen in the IPL currently. But he's not playing any other format. That, because of his age, his age might make him so you think he can play the 50 over World Cup? Yeah, he comes in the middle order. So India Indian batting is pretty good. So I say he can play. And for wicket keeping, you don't need to run. You don't need to run much. You have to just stand. And he can run between the run fast between the wickets. He's good at batting or wicket keeper? Both. He is very good, very good goalkeeper, uh, wicket keeper. And batting, you may have seen. You must have seen on the TV. But he's known for his running between the wickets. You're saying if he's old, then he cannot play. No, I'm not saying that. He uh, like he scores many runs. I'm also saying that he runs very well between the wickets. But he's good scorer too. But what is the best move for wicket keeping or batting or wicket keeping is main? Okay. Uh, whom does he look up to in the Indian team, according to you? Like as the best player. No. no. Every player looks up to a certain player, like Virat Kohli looks up to Sachin. Yeah. So whom do you feel <coughs> he looks up to in I the Indian team? Currently. Or who were in the Indian team? I feel he must have tried to look up to Sachin Tendulkar because he excelled as a batsman too. Or, a, or any other, like, any other professional record keeper from other teams. From, but from uh, India, I think Sachin Tendulkar. How would you relate to him? Like you, there are some qualities which he has, which you think you also have. Any of them? Like, if you have to reach success, you have to work hard. That like. You can't just be lazy. No. I think we, this is such a topic that I'm going to talk about that each and every one of us will definitely relate to him. Sachin Tenulkar, known as one of the greatest batsmen in the world, also regarded to as being the god for some. So let's look at a bit of Sachin Tenulkar's life and try to understand if we can learn something from him of some value. The first thing that we need to realize when we are talking about Sachin Tendulkar is that he came from a very middle class family. He was really passionate about cricket but did not have the resources back then to actually support himself. 
a little brief about his whole family. His father was a, a Marathi teacher in a school and also was a poet. Sachin really looked up to his father a lot as he thought that his father gave him a lot of life lessons. Some of the life lessons that his father gave him was he told him that however good cricketer you become, it's, be it's more important that you become a better human. The next person Sachin really looked up to for a hard work was Sachin's mother. He really feels that she worked very hard all the while. Even while his uh, when he used to go for practices and come back home, she would sit, press his legs, give him food, things like that. Sachin had three siblings, uh, two elder brothers and one elder sister, Nithin being the eldest. Sachin would be slightly fearful about Nithin because if, let's say if his mother called him, he would not probably come home. But if the moment Nithin called him, Sachin would definitely come home. The next person is Ajit. Ajit is probably the, the reason why Sachin is Sachin according to him. He feels that whenever he's batting on the field, Ajit is in his mind because they both would discuss a lot of cricket and they would work out a strategy and various other things. Also uh, comes uh, Savita who is Sachin's sister. Uh, um, Sachin feels that when she went to Kashmir and she came back, when she got gifts for everyone, he, she got him a Kashmir willow bat which he <coughs> cherishes a lot because that was his first introduction to cricket. Now coming to the whole point of how Sachin got into cricket and what, why he is so passionate about it. This, this dates back down to 1983 when the World Cup was won by India and Sachin, a young Sachin along with his family was watching the World Cup at home on a small black and white TV. He seen the joy that were there on the streets of the country and also with the players by, since they had won the World Cup. It was his dream that someday even he was to lift up the World Cup. Uh, Coming down to uh, Sachin who took him to a sir, I mean, Sachin was taken to a, a coach, uh, his name is Mr. Manjrekar sir, till now he calls him sir is because he feels that he taught him a lot. And the person who took Sachin to Manjrekar sir was his elder brother Ajit. Uh, coming to finally Manjrekar sir, the way he trained Sachin was very unique. He would keep around 20 fielders on the field or let's say 25 and he would make him play. So what happened out here was Sachin had to play a lot of shots on the ground which according to him he feels that he learned uh, very important was that he could play ground shots so that he doesn't get out. Another thing that Manjrekar Sur could do, he would have kept a coin on the stumps and if they made him out, the player would have got that. The, the number of coins that Sachin got at the end of the match, he would treat them like gold medals because he felt that they played a very important role in his life. Coming to finally when Sachin got a chance to play for the Indian team, it was a 1989 India vs Pakistan match where you had people like Vaseem Akram, Vaka uh, Yunus. These were one of the very sought after bowlers in Pakistan and very feared by the Indian cricket team. It was in the first over itself that he was treated to around 4 bouncers which really gave him a taste that what test cricket is all about and uh, he still did not give up. A small incident about what happened in the, the whole test match series was the uh, one game where India was loitering at 20 for 4 was when Sachin came down and uh, Mr. Navjot Singh Sindhu has a very important take on that. He feels that, I mean he could see that they were peppering him with a very difficult ball and thing like that and Sachin got one ball on his nose to which his nose was dislocated and uh, he was bleeding completely. Uh, Navjot Singh Sindhu thought that he is going to go back to the dressing room. But in, in Sachin, he did not give up. He stood there, he wiped his uh, the blood and he continued playing. Another point being, uh, his first 100 was in 1990, uh, where he scored <coughs> against England and it's the most cherished 100 for him. The next thing being, uh, at 1991, where he met his wife, it was at an airport and uh, they dated for around 4 years, after which in 1995 they got married. Uh, 1996 was the first World Cup that India played uh, with Sachin being in the team but however they couldn't win that and this happened at Kolkata. The fans got very agitated and to which they let few parts of the stadium on fire as well. After this Sachin was termed as the Indian captain which he was not informed but he ended up getting to know through the news. But later due to bad performances they thought that uh, it's having a toll on him and they removed him from captaincy without informing him as well. A few uh, points about Sachin and what we can learn about him. The first one being he is very religious and very superstitious. So let's say in a particular match if he scored a hundred by having a particular cup of coffee he will, have the he will do the same thing each and every match. The next point being that 
he takes a lot of care about his kid bag. He feels that if you take care of them when they are with you, they will take care of you on the field. Another point being that Sachin says he's never prepped for any player except Shaywon. He feels that uh, he was one of the best bowlers at that time. The boom period of Sachin was from 1998 to 2003, and it kind of sung all around in 2011 when India won the World Cup. And there are so many pictures of Sachin being so happy about it. And uh, many people who know him from his childhood said they have never seen him that happy. And uh, concluding was uh, later that year itself when he got his 100-100 and uh, that according to him summed up his whole life to which he retired in Mankade Stadium itself. He felt that it began there and it ended there. So this in a small shell is the whole life of Sachin. I hope you all all liked it and thank you. Uh, nowadays we are listening that Virat Kohli is Going, uh, going, is, uh, going to beat Sachin Tendulkar's 100 centuries. So what do you think Sachin is better or Virat Kohli is? See, uh, what, what I would like to say, as you said, uh, Sachin has made 100 hundred and Virat Kohli is reaching there. What happens is Virat Kohli has always said that he looks up to Sachin as a god. I mean, not as exactly as a god, as someone whom he really looks up to. So you cannot, he said, by people comparing me to Sachin, you are insulting me. So probably that's the first thing that Virat Kohli will never going to be compared with Sachin. The next thing being that Sachin said that if anyone wants to break my 100-100, it should be an Indian. And I myself will go and have a cup of champagne with her. So that. Who supported Sachin and in what way? Uh, I feel his, uh, the elder brother Ajit supported him a lot. Along with Manjarikar sir who coached Sachin and Sachin son as well. Like? You were saying that he played uh, for India at the age of 16. Yeah, so how, like, was, what was his family's reaction when he left school for cricket? So, what happened was, see, Sachin had made it very clear with his elder brother that he was very inclined towards sports, to which uh, his family did support him a lot was, he used to practice at Shivaji Park itself, right? And they, they did not stay here, so he would travel a lot. But his family supported him so much that they told him that you stay with another uncle and auntie who is closer to the ground. So it saves your travelling time. So that just goes on to prove that his family was totally supportive of what he wanted to do and that was become a cricketer. Does Sachin do any all jobs to earn money? Uh, as far as it goes, I feel that he used to earn, a, I mean, he used to get most of his income out through cricket. And even once he was in cricket, he got a lot of sponsorship. So that's all about it. There are no proper incidents of him working somewhere else as of as much as I have read. Was it in turning point for him? Uh, if you were, uh, you were to ask me, he was always considered as someone who was inclined towards cricket. And you could see that in the first game also that he played. So I would feel that the moment he got selected for the Indian team was his turning point. What is his biggest achievement? Uh, his biggest achievement by far according to him is the moment he lifted up the World Cup. That was something that he always wanted and that for him is the biggest achievement. What does Sachin inspire, inspire you as a person? So if you were to ask me what I look at, yeah, Sachin was a very disciplined person. Uh, he would uh, have his bag ready like two days prior to an action match is what something really is something that really inspires me that how can someone be so focused on what they have to do and so very well organized about everything? Uh, Sachin was, uh, he said that Sachin was in a very bad phase after all the people were about to hit him. So how did he recover from that? So Sachin, uh, what would happen every match that he would not play well, he would go and lock himself up in the room and really cry his heart, heart out because he would look to improve himself all the time. The moment. He saw that the Indian people also are against that. He realized that uh, he has to improve his game and because he is representing the country as a whole. So he worked a lot on himself even after injuries and he came back into the Indian team. Okay, thank you.